Brand New Cherry Flavor, or BNCF, is a Netflix series about an aspiring movie director who gets involved with a Hollywood witch. Here's how the crazy events of this series relate to the dark practices that actually happen in Hollywood, behind closed doors. Warning. Gigantic spoilers ahead. If I had to sum up the NCF in one word, it would probably be puke. Because, for one, there's a whole lot of puking going on in that series. Second, there are lots of gory disgusting scenes that I'd like to block out of my memory forever. But the most pukey aspect of this series is, the fact, that most of its insane and surreal events, are inspired by real life. Even the part where the witch turns people into slaves zombies. Yes. In many ways, the NCF is reminiscent of movies such as Mall and Drive and The Neon Demon, which are about young talents trying to make it to Hollywood, only to discover that there's something terribly wrong with it. In fact, the NCF and The Neon Demon are both centered around the same exact symbolism. The promotional posters of BNCF and The Neon Demon focus on the same exact symbol. An eyeball being eaten. The NCF and the Neon Demon are both about Hollywood being run by evil murderous cannibalistic witches. And, in both, there's a scene where an actress or model eats an actual eyeball. What does it represent? Many things. But mainly, the soul-deadening sacrifice one must make to the occult elite in order to succeed in the entertainment industry. As seen in countless videos in the past, the one-eye sign is the favorite symbol of the occult elite. Portraying artists swallowing an eye, which is also an act of cannibalism, is the perfect symbol representing the selling of one's soul. The entire BNCF series has an obsessive fixation with the one-eye sign, it is everywhere, all the time. That's a way of letting viewers know, that the horrific and disgusting that happen in the series are not just entertainment. It's the occult elite revealing its true ugly face. And having the viewers think it's cool, sexy, and empowering. Here's a look at key events in the series and how they relate in real life Hollywood. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The NCF is about a young movie director named Lisa Nova who moves to Los Angeles with dreams of making it big in the industry. Her short movie, titled Lucy's Eye, immediately captures the attention of big names in the industry. Short snippets of Lisa's movie are shown throughout the episodes. The title screen of the movie alone indicates that this is pure cult elite madness. The movie is all about the one eye sign. The short movie ends with the actress literally scooping one of her eyes out and eating it. Although this sounds like the worst movie ever made, people in Hollywood love it. They're also fascinated by the special effects of that final scene. However, we soon learn that there's a whole lot of evil stuff surrounding the making of that movie. Before filming the final scene of Lucy's eye, Lisa, who directs the movie, tells Mary, the actress, that she wants an Isabella Ajani in possession level performance. That's an interesting reference, because Ajani's role in this highly disturbing movie about demon possession nearly killed her. The role was emotionally exhausting for Ajani. In one of the interviews, she stated that it took her several years to recover from her performance, which Jay Hoberman called a veritable aria of hysteria. It was rumored that she attempted suicide after filming completed, which was confirmed by Yuboski. Before filming the final scene of the movie, Lisa and Mary take paid, a hallucinogen drug used by native tribes before religious ceremonies. Soon after, Mary started seeing some freaky stuff. While she was being filmed by Lisa, Mary saw an entity possessing the director. Also, a one-eye sign in this shot. 
Terrified by the demon-like thing that was inside Lisa, Mary actually scooped her eye out and ate it. And Lisa filmed the scene and kept it in the movie as the grand finale. In short, there were no special effects. Viewers of Lucy's Eye are actually watching a snuff-like movie, which happens to be one of the occult elite sick obsessions. Lisa's movie eventually captures the attention of a Hollywood big shot named Lou Burke, who wants to turn Lucy's Eye into a blockbuster hit. While, at first, Burke acted as a mentor, he soon tried to sleep with Lisa. When she refused, Lisa was replaced as director of her movie. This caused Lisa to be angry and wanting revenge. Enters Boro. This snapshot shows Boro presents herself to Lisa at a Hollywood party. Ever since Lisa arrived in Hollywood, Boro has been tracking down Lisa. She sensed a force in Lisa, and she wants to consume it. During a party with Hollywood Big Shots, Boro presents herself to Lisa and tells her that she can destroy the life of Lou Burke. The method, a curse using the blackest magics. But first, Lisa must go through a ritual involving eating a stew made from disgusting ingredients. The character of Boro appears to be heavily inspired by an actual Hollywood witch, Marina Abramovic. Like Boro, Abramovic is influential in Hollywood, takes stars under her wing, and involves them in events involving witchcraft, spirit cooking. Also, like Boro, Abramovic is also a big fan of cannibalism. Abramovic organized several star-studded events which culminated with people eating a human-shaped cake. In this picture, Debbie Harry cuts herself up at the Museum of Contemporary Art Gala in 2011. As we'll soon see, Boro has the same exact interests as Abramovic. So she makes a deal with Lisa. She destroys Lou Burke's life by putting a curse on him, and Lisa pays her, in the weirdest way possible. As payment for her services, Boro can make Lisa puke out kittens on command. Boro must really like cats. But, actually, no. She drinks their blood, and then she kills them. This snapshot shows Boro extracts blood from a cat in order to drink it. If Boro doesn't regularly drink blood from a cat that was birthed by Lisa, she starts to wither away. In case you didn't know, the occult elite has been drinking the blood of young people to regenerate vitality for centuries. The NCF is yet another media product that celebrates and normalizes this practice which used to be considered an abomination. So we soon understand that there's something clearly wrong with Boro. Then, we learn that she's not really human. She's actually a centuries-old entity demon spirit who jumps from one human body to another. In a particularly upsetting scene, Boro poisons the family of the woman whose body she is currently possessing. Then, she performs a lobotomy on them by removing a part of their brains through their nose and eating it. This scene is supposed to be humorous. Boro also has an army of dead, people she controls to do her bidding. She treats them like animals. This snapshot shows Boro throws raw meat into a dog bowl to feed her slaves. Boro is therefore an adept of the most infernal dark arts, necromancy. Furthermore, these zombies are a symbolic way of representing the occult elite's most horrific practice, mind control, aka MK Ultra. Through sadistic practices that often involve rituals, MK slaves lose their core personality, they become zombies, and are reprogrammed to do their handler's bidding. Aura uses her slaves to stalk and kill people. In the world of monarch mind control, this is called Delta programming. In one symbolic scene, we learn more about the force that animates Boro and the occult elite. The woman goes to Boro for a tarot reading. When the woman sees the devil card, she says, The devil? Does this mean that something bad is going to happen? Boro answers, It's cool. The devil isn't necessarily bad. But it's, the devil. The one and only. But, you know, the devil can have all sorts of meaning. Right after, the woman is killed and becomes one of Boro's slaves. She becomes chained to Boro the same way the woman in the tarot card is chained to the devil. Through this short and seemingly unimportant scene, we understand the true forces at play in BNCF.
When Boro helps Lisa destroy Lou Burke, the predatory Hollywood big shot, using a curse, the series conveys a strong empowered feminist witch burning the patriarchy kind of vibe. However, we actually witness the exact opposite of empowerment. To get what she wants, Lisa actually has to submit to Boro and subject herself to the occult elite's depraved ways. And a bunch of innocents suffer horribly because of it. During a Christmas party, the guy who was supposed to replace Lisa as the director of her movie, suddenly catches fire. As Lisa watches the guy burn, Boro stands behind her. In a previous scene, Lisa is asked what she's going to wear to the party. She wears a red dress, the color of sacrifice. In order to destroy Lou Burke, Boro tells Lisa that she must go through a binding ritual. Boro gives Lisa Balch, an ancient drink used by Mayans during ceremonies of communion with the elements and spirits of nature, as well as the lords of the heavens. Boro says. It opens you up and makes you receptive to the spirits. In order to carry out the curse, Boro asks Lisa to find a picture of Lou Burke and a pinch of pubic hair. While this last ingredient sounds somewhat humorous, pubic hair has been used in actual real-life witchcraft for centuries. Across the world, in all types of magic, including voodoo and hoodoo, witches use pubic hair as an especially robust ingredient for spells. Although the story of BNCF is fictional, it is based on the actual occult mentality in Hollywood. And, in order to get what she wants, Lisa will have to descend further down into its depravity. And nearly everyone she comes across, ends up dying horribly. One of the consequences of Lisa's curse. Lou Burke's son, who's an innocent bystander in this story, turns into one of Boro's zombie slaves. In order to get rid of the curse that took his son, Lou Burke hires Hitman to kill Lisa. When a Hitman enters her apartment, Lisa, who has heightened the cult powers, after licking a toad, another ancient drug, kills him savagely, and, eats a part of him. When a friend of Lisa asks her how it felt, she responds, kind of like opening a birthday present. Why does Netflix keep promoting cannibalism? You know why. And there's even more of it in BNCF. Boro tells Lisa that the toad she licked was poisonous, and that she will soon die, unless she goes through rituals of sex magic and blood magic. Once again, those are not random, made-up things that somewhat sound witchy. Those are at the core of the teachings of occult secret societies that are extremely powerful in Hollywood such as the Ordo Templi Orientis, or OTO. This is the cover of an OTO book, written by occultist, Aleister Crowley. While Lisa engages in magic, Boro watches over like some kind of creepy witch. The blood magic ritual is somewhat less pleasurable. According to Boro, Lisa must consume the flesh of a man who died in his prime, like Holy Communion. The Holy Communion part is not random. Satanic black masses are based on the reversal of Christian rituals and traditions. In the particularly nauseating scene, Boro cuts a piece of a recently deceased man, who happens to be Lisa's friend, and cooks it inside an omelet. When faced with that cursed dish, Lisa comes to a realization that was probably shared by countless actual celebrities. All I wanted to do was to make a movie. It feels like I traded his life for a F-King movie. Fortunately for Lisa, she discovers that she doesn't actually need to eat this omelet to cure the poison. It seems like Boro was lying to Lisa in order to initiate her into the darkest practices of the occult elite. After all of this, a rich Hollywood guy contacts Lisa and tells her that he wants to finance her film. Moral of the story. It worked. When Lisa goes back to Lou Burke to kill him, she finds a broken man who is constantly in pain. He tells her. You think you're F-King righteous? You think it's artist versus predatory producer? Are you so sure you are the hero of this story? That's a good question. In fact, there doesn't really seem to be a hero in this series. All of the characters with heroic traits all died in horrific ways. Moral of the story, Hollywood is not a place for good people. In the final episode, Lisa, who is apparently trying to flee Hollywood, leaves for Brazil. Lisa is at an airport that has an ethereal feel. Is she maybe dead? I guess that will be revealed in the next season. Or whatever.
Most media critics describe BNCF as a wild ride with all kinds of crazy stuff happening. But that's not all that is happening. Through a crescendo of increasingly horrifying scenes, BNCF takes the viewers right inside the sick world of the occult elite. And, this sickness is presented in a somewhat cool and desirable fashion. Although Bora the Witch ended up being a bad guy, she is nevertheless portrayed as a cool and empowered figure that many viewers will admire. The NCF is yet another Netflix creation that celebrates all of the satanic horrors of the occult elite. Not unlike series such as Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, BNCF depicts abhorrent practices such as cannibalism and mind control in a fun and entertaining manner. In short, this is all about the occult elite revealing its true face and incorporating it into popular culture. And even shorter, this series is a brand new flavor of crap they've been serving the masses for years. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.